All right, what's going on guys? I want to talk specifically about how to become a hunting guide in Alaska. And so I wanna go over some of the requirements because they're very different than a lot of states. For example, in Arizona, all you need to do is fill out a little bit of paperwork, take an online test, make sure you're not running from the law and you know, out on bail, those kinds of things, and then you can become a, uh, a guide in Arizona. In Alaska, it's very, very different. So I'm gonna go over some of the requirements so you know up front what it takes to become a guide in, in Alaska. And I'm gonna read a couple. I'm gonna put them up too so you guys can see them, and then, uh, and then we'll just kinda talk about what they mean. So first off, I mentioned this in a previous video, you have to be 18 years or older. Um, the second part, here's where it differs, okay? The, this is the biggest uh, hurdle in becoming an, a guide in Alaska. And in Alaska, it's called an assistant guide. So anytime I refer to an assistant guide license, it just means kind of your basic guide license. You can't contract hunts. You're not an outfitter. You're not a registered guide. But you can guide any animal, anywhere, anytime for anybody in Alaska who's an outfitter and has a has a, a, a outfitter license. Okay, so the second requirement which is the big hurdle, is you have to have legally hunted big game in the state of Alaska for at least 60 days during two or more calendar years. At least 30 of those 60 must be spent working in a guide camp or supervised by a licensed guide while performing guide-related duties. Documented completion of a board-approved assistant guide training course may count for 10 days. So that's kind of wordy, but this is straight off of the requirements guide for the Big Game Commercial Services Board. So what that means is um, you have to spend two months in two different years. I believe it's within a five-year period. They don't tell you right here, but you have to do it within like a five-year period. You doesn't necessarily have to be back-to-back -back years, but you have to spend 60 days hunting or in a guide related camp or doing any kind of activity in the hunting realm um, and it says specifically 30 of those 60 days have to be in a guide camp. That is a big big time commitment for a lot of guys um, especially if you're kind of in your in your third 20 late 20s or 30s and you're like I want to become a guide you have to commit some time to do that so one of those ways I mean, we call it being a packer. One of those ways you can do that is is being a packer and going on uh, basically August and September of hunts. So you go up to Alaska, you don't pay for your travel, but typically as a packer you get paid by the month or pretty minimally to learn and to be trained and to get your guide requirement. Now, what you can do and what a lot of guys do and what I did is during those couple months where you're not really getting paid a lot, you're kind of just being, um, you're, you're there to fulfill the requirements. You're being a packer. You're helping, you're helping guys. You're helping build stuff. You're helping do stuff around camp. Um, you can help transition after that season's done and actually get a job working as the guide elsewhere and be kind of fast-tracked into the guide role. So what a lot of guys do, like I said, what I did is when I was a packer, I was packing in Alaska, not getting paid very much, and then... I immediately after that was done, started guiding in Arizona, I started guiding in Wyoming in the seasons that uh, were not required in Alaska. So a lot of those seasons typically are October, November, December, January, February. Alaska's pretty much done hunting at the end of September, guys. So it may seem like a lot of time commitment, but if you can arrange it and plan it out right, you can start working on getting your guide license in Alaska, but still get a job and kind of pursue that career in the hunting guide life. So, and that again, I can help with that in certain aspects because I have outfitter buddies that are always looking for help um, in Wyoming, in Arizona. So if this is something you want to do, just hit me up. But anyway, that's not what I'm here to talk about. I want to go over the third requirement. You must possess a valid first aid, basic first aid card issued through the American Red Cross or similar organization. Not a big deal, pretty easy to get, guys. Um, go do a first aid class and then you can renew it uh, every two years. 
Um, you must submit a written recommendation from a guide or register from a registered guide outfitter who intends to employ the applicant as an assistant guide. So here's another caveat. So not only if you've met those requirements, but you need a signed affidavit letter from a registered guide like myself or another outfitter in Alaska that has a registered guide license to even apply to get an assistant guide license. So this comes into play with this guy. So say you work for an outfitter for two months, do two years, and then you have a bad falling out or you don't want to ever work for this guy again. You still need somebody to write you a letter to employ you. You can't just go apply independently to Alaska and say, hey, look, I've done my two years or I've done my 60 days within my two years. I want my assistant guide license. You can't do that. So you have to be endorsed by a registered guide or outfitter, and that's why it's important on who you go to work for as a packer, as getting your time frame. It's very important. Those first steps, that foundation is extremely important in the guide world. So just so you know, you have to be endorsed. You can't do this independently. Um, and then it goes on. You have to meet some eligibility requirements um, as far as that's rule or qualification number five. Um, Eligibility requirements, just, you know, residency and, and not being a, a, an active felon on the run from the law kind of situation. Um, a non-resident license fee is $1,020. That's a two-year license, so basically think of it as a $500 a year license. It's a lot of money, guys, especially when you have to pay that and you better be in a good situation with an outfitter to ensure that you will get work when you buy that license. So some outfitters will pay that fee um, and to make sure that you're able to guide and, and just kind of get you started. So um, that's one thing that can happen. Um, these are just things that you have to complete. So these aren't necessarily qualifications, um, but you have to complete, um, get notarized the application. Obviously that goes with most things. Um, you have to report a criminal justice information and fish and wildlife violation report. Um, the Alaska report is different, so you have to do it both for your home state and for Alaska. And you have to verify all of your license status if you've ever held a guide license in any other state. So for me, being in Arizona, I started my Arizona outfit uh, quite a while ago. I was very young, and so I had to do a little bit of extra paperwork because I had to get my fish and wildlife records from Arizona from Alaska and also go through some of the guide licenses I had in other states and verify my me in good standing so I you can't have wildlife outstanding wildlife violations in these states especially if they're unreported you have to prove that you're in good standing you have to prove any violation you may have had so it just there's a, there is a level of paperwork that goes on with this guys so you have to be ready for that so you have to have like a police uh, criminal background check for your state for Alaska uh, wildlife background check for your state and Alaska and any other state you work for. You know, it kind of goes without saying, but you need to know. Um, I know a couple buddies that have run into some issues because they may have forgot about like a misdemeanor that happened five years ago when they were in college or something um, after a football game or, you know, something like that. Um, and you just got to make sure that you're you're very, very honest and you're not trying to uh, push something under the rug because you can still get your guide license, guys, if you've made a couple mistakes in the past, but you have will have a very, very difficult time getting a guide license if you don't report anything, and then when they do the background checks, they find something, they're going to go, well, he's trying to hide this, and we are not going to give a license to somebody who's going to try to hide something that they had a violation for professionally, we're not going to cut them loose. So be very careful of that, guys. Even if it's something that's honest, like I said, I've had buddies that forgot about things or that thought they were off the record and it came back and it was on the record. They didn't have any idea and it caused them problems, caused a big delay in their license um, obtaining uh, situation. So that being said, so that's a couple of the basic things, uh, just eligibility requirements. So there is, I don't know if you noticed, but there's no test you have to take. I never talk about a test in Alaska for having a guide license. Or you don't have to take a written test. This is, a, this is kind of a cool deal. So you just have to meet the requirements uh, 
put forth by the Alaska Big Game Commercial Services Board. And this is something where if you're really interested, I would do your research. More importantly, I would reach out to people who are an outfitter, who are who need help. Um, talk to some assistant guides, talk to an Alaskan outfitter or two, and see what kind of operation they have, see what kind of operation they're running. Because here's what can happen. You get an outfitter who basically just runs um, kind of a work camp, doesn't have any clients, and just uses young kids to work. See, that's not what you want to get involved in. There's a few of those out there. Um, to be completely honest, I've rescued a few kids from situations like that where they were working for an outfitter. I will not name him or her, uh, but they were working for an outfitter that literally just used them as worker slaves. Unpaid uh, and didn't ever, ever intend to hire them as a guide because they didn't have the clients. So I'm not saying you're not going to work really hard. I'm not saying you're, you're not going to do labor work. I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying you're not going to do all of those things. But you want to invest in an outfitter that will provide the requirements necessary, but also give you a future in the big game hunting world. So you're going to build stuff. You're going to work around camp. You're going to do a lot of stuff. You're not going to get paid very much. But at the end of the day, you want to know that, hey, when I fulfill these requirements, I'm going to be a hunting guide and I'm also going to have clients and I'm going to get paid by guiding. So that's kind of the thing that we have to be aware of and, and if you're looking into the situation, you should be aware of, you should understand the history, you know, look back, hey, how many guys, does he have a lot of guys typically, does he have a lot of hunters, how many guides does he have? And so when you're a packer and you're working under an outfitter, you're going to be with one of the outfitter's guides and so you can talk to him, hey, what is a normal season like, what is this like, all this kind of stuff and you can kind of get a feel of what kind of operation is being run even with no experience in the guide world. So that's some advice there of uh, how to become an Alaskan guide, hunting guide specifically. Now, to become a registered guide or outfitter, that's a whole nother set of extremely difficult uh, testing processes, ex extremely difficult eligibility requirements, and also time requirements as well. We will not get into that today. But I encourage you, if you have any questions about becoming a guide in Alaska or any other state, reach out to me. Um, I have some resources that can help. And uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to help guys because we all have to start somewhere. So I hope this helped anybody who's wondering. And I'm going to be kind of going through some different states in the future. So hopefully every week or every other week, I'm going to go over some of the basic states um, like Arizona for me, for example, what it takes. Uh, I want to do that video next. And also Wyoming, um, Colorado, and a couple like free floaters out there, maybe do a Utah or Montana. You know, those are a couple pretty important places to guide and also what it takes to be a guide there just in case you were wondering. So hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Um, reach out to me if you have any questions and stay blessed. Thank you.